Hi, my name is Mark Flagler. Over the past 11 years, I've hiked over 6,000 miles along long distance trails on three continents. I hike because I love the outdoors. I hike to experience new places, to challenge myself, and to stay fit. And hiking is also part of my work. My company, Flagler Films, specializes in producing outdoor recreation and adventure programs for television, DVD, and online. In 2006 and 2007, I had the privilege to spend eight months out along the Continental Divide Trail. I was there to produce a television and DVD documentary titled Walking the Great Divide, A Journey Along the Continental Divide Trail. To make this movie, I hiked over 1,500 miles, drove over 35,000 miles, interviewed 31 thru-hikers, and visited the many scenic and special places found along this National Scenic Trail. Before I even set foot out along the CDT, I knew that trying to capture a 3,100 mile trail that stretches from Mexico to Canada along the backbone of America was going to be difficult. When I think of the CDT, three words come to mind. Challenging, stunning, and wild. From the first steps at the Mexican border, through hikers are introduced to challenges that are part of hiking the CDT. I wanted to capture this through hiker experience of struggle, trials, and tribulations. So to do this, I had to experience them for myself. Check out these spikes. Holy cow. In New Mexico, the biggest challenges were water, or lack thereof, and navigation, because not all of the trail is completely marked. Colorado has a different set of obstacles, like deep snow at higher elevations, thunderstorms with lightning, high altitude climbing and camping, and yes, navigation again. In Wyoming, hikers have to cope with record heat in the Great Divide Basin, and grizzly bears in Yellowstone. Idaho and Montana have forest fire danger, more grizzlies, and snowfall that can end a through hike. So yes, the CDT is extremely challenging, but hikers are rewarded with some of the most spectacular, diverse, and wild scenery on the planet. I captured over 100 hours of video footage, and trying to edit that down to a two-hour documentary was not easy. Some of my favorite places on the trail to both hike and film are in New Mexico, the ancient Gila cliff dwellings, Pie Town, and El Mapais National Monument. In Colorado, the remote Wimanooch Wilderness, the Divide's highest mountain, Gray's Peak, and Rocky Mountain National Park. In Wyoming, the Great Divide Basin, the rugged Wind River Range, and the iconic Yellowstone National Park. In Idaho, the spectacular Centennial Mountains and Horse Prairie Peak. In Montana, there's the Anaconda Pentler Wilderness and the crown jewel of the trail for me, Glacier National Park. The hikers that I met, interviewed, filmed walking, and spent time with will never be forgotten. I can't thank the hikers enough for keeping in contact with me during their through hike. This allowed me to capture so many of them from New Mexico to the Canadian border. I love this hike. This has been a very good experience. Um, probably of all of the three big hikes that I've done, this is the most transformative for me. Just the generosity of people that we met was just incredible. And through hiking seems to bring out I don't know, when you're, when you're on a through hike you just see how kind people can be. I think I told you earlier in the tape that one of my biggest fears was lightning. It's no longer my biggest fear because I don't think I can get any closer to it. could sum that up in two words, uh, life threatening. Huh? It's an awesome trail, I love it, but it'll chew you up and spit you out every day. So you're just concentrating all the time, working really hard all the time, and at the end of the day you're just exhausted. And you lay there and you think, well, gee, I got to get up at the crack of dawn and do this all over again. It always feels good to take on a challenge and stick with it long enough and be fortunate enough and to 
conserve your resources enough along the way to actually get to where you're going. I wouldn't have asked for anything more or anything different or any other trail, you know, it's just what I wanted. <laughs> I don't believe I had a single thought about quitting. Uh, well, actually, maybe one day. <laughs> you know, I found what I was looking for out here, which was the wildness and the beauty and the sense of adventure that comes from exploring new country. It's tough trail, and but it's it's wild, and that's what makes it so good. It's, it's unique. I would say if you have an opportunity to do it, do it, because it's so worth it. And even if you don't think you can, you know, um, just try it, because it, it's, it's amazing, and I, I wouldn't change this experience for the world. So. When I was on the CDT, the trail was 70% completed. That leaves 30% of the trail unfinished and not protected. I think it is very important for this National Scenic Trail to have 100% of the route established and protected for future generations of visitors. Land protection will not detract the beauty and wildness of the CDT and is vital to preserving this national treasure. I am so happy that I met the hikers that I did, saw the scenic places, visited the small towns, and experienced the many challenges that make the Continental Divide Trail what it is. And what makes me even happier is that I was able to capture this journey and to share with television audiences, DVD enthusiasts, and online viewers this king of trails. To date, over one million U.S. households have tuned in to watch Walk in the Great Divide. My documentary was about through-hiking the CDT, but one doesn't have to strap on a backpack for five or six months or, or hike thousands of miles to truly experience the beauty this trail has to offer. Find your own way along the Continental Divide Trail. Go for a day hike, weekend backpacking trip, or just an hour walk along this incredible footpath. You'll be glad you did.